good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we're going to do what we did with Cosmic Eclipse. You see, when Cosmic Eclipse came out, I went and had a look at Twitter over in Japan, and I found a Japanese shop that was basically giving their prices for the cards, and that gave a really good indication for which cards were sought after, and some rough comparative prices. Two things we must point out at the beginning. Number one, I didn't make this clear enough last time, let me make it clear now. These are buying prices. These are the prices the shop will give you for the card, so you can add another kind of one-third-ish on top of that for what they're actually going to sell it for. Secondly, cards are cheaper in Japan. Buying singles in Japan is generally cheaper, so even when you've added on the kind of one-third to a half to turn it into a selling price, not a buying price, you still need to bear in mind that actually in Japan, things are a little bit cheaper generally. So I suppose we should start off with Zassi and V, shouldn't we? Because you know what? Zassian V is the big daddy. It is the presumptive very best card in the set. And that's how it's looking, incidentally, over in Japan at the moment. So starting off, the regular art is being bought for about 1,800 yen, which you're looking at about $16 or about £13 in the UK. So this is going to be a pretty expensive card. Not hideously expensive. You're probably looking at somewhere in the region of kind of like a $25 to $30 card at a guess. But then we get to the full art version of it where you're paying 2,800 yen. So now you're going up to about $25 or about £20. That's quite a bit. But then we don't have Rainbow Rare per se anymore. What we've got are these new gold cards. And the gold card is coming in at 5,500 yen, which is a $50 or £38 card. So this is a card where you're really going to be looking up to. Honestly, initially, you should expect to be paying $80 to $100 for this card. That would be my guess. Based on the Japanese prices, you should be paying about three times as much for the gold as you would for the regular. This is a very, very expensive card. Now, if we put that in a little bit of context, there are a couple of other Pokemon Vs that are looking like very good cards and seeing a fair amount of play that are significantly lower. Now, we could look at Tapu Koko V and go, 900 yen, well, that's $8 or £6. That's not... Wait, isn't that supposed to be a really good card? Yes and no. You see, yes, it is a very good card, but remember that this was in the V-Dex over in Japan. And that is to say that you don't pull it from a pack, you just open it. You just open it up and that's what you get. So you do need to bear in mind that it's not actually quite that simple. Now, one of the ones that has surprised me with how cheap it's actually ended up being is Crammer and V. Crammer and V is being bought for 100 yen which is like 90 cents or 70p in the UK. That's an incredibly cheap card, which is very interesting to me because it's a good card. Like, Crammer and V's got that really nice attack whereby you discard all the energy attached to it and do 160 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Or not even bench, any Pokemon. It sees play in Malamar decks. It sees play in Welder decks. I mean, it will see play in Frostmoth decks just so long as they're also playing Quagsire to move the energy over. This seems too low for me. This is one of the prices where I, I don't fully understand it. It doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. I respectfully disagree. But if you want to see some comparisons to cards that are out there at the moment, how about... Well, how about Thunder Mountain? Thunder Mountain comes in at 1,100 yen, which is about £7.50 or about $10. So you're seeing here quite a, um, quite a staple card that we see played an awful lot. It finds its way into a huge amount of decks. And if that's coming in at that price, if that's kind of a $10 card, that should give you some nice context to some of the other cards we see on this list. Now, the other big one we see here, and it is a very big card, it's one that is going to be very sought after, what about Gold Quick Ball? You see, Gold Quick Ball comes in at 7,000 yen, and I'll do a little bit of a check in a minute to make sure I've not missed anything, but when we look at the buy list here, 
This is the most expensive card on the buy list that I found. This is the one they're paying the most for. Now, bearing in mind, we were paying 5,500 yen for gold Zassian. We're paying 7,000 yen for gold Quick Ball. 7,000 yen, we're looking at $64 or about £49. Now, bearing in mind, these are the buy prices in Japan where cards are cheaper, and we're looking at the equivalent of about $64. This is going to be a ridiculously expensive card. If you want to get your hand on Gold Quick Ball, it is going to cost you a bit. And this does make sense, right? Several reasons I can tell you for this. First of all, Quick Ball tends to be a staple in most of the good decks at the moment. It sees a huge amount of play. But outside of the fact that it's a staple, we need to remember the fact that th this isn't a one-off. Generally speaking, people don't play Quick Ball as a one-off. People play Quick Ball as a four-off. So it's not just that people want the cards. It's that people want many versions of them. And generally, if you want one of the gold, you want four of the gold. Gold Quick Ball really is looking like it's going to be the most expensive card in the set. Gold Quick Ball is going to be very, very similar to something like Gold Ultra Ball. Gold Ultra Ball, for a very long time, was one of the most expensive cards we had. And it was for a number of reasons, but one of the reasons was it was a staple in almost every deck. And another one of the reasons was when you played Gold Ultra Ball, you were generally playing four Gold Ultra Ball. Some people did just buy one, of course they did. But the vast majority of people who wanted this wanted it for the playset, at least in terms of players. There will be collectors out there that just want one of them. And the kings of the set are Gold Zassi and V and Gold Quick Ball. They are the ones you want. But there are a couple others we can take a quick look at. The Full Art Professor Magnolia. Because remember, we have these Full Art supporters now. You got 1,300 yen. So you're coming in at somewhere around $12.09. There's a bit of value attached to it. It's not huge. But there's, there's a little bit. You'll pay a few quid for this. It is a... I would describe it as a moderately sought-after card. The other one we should probably have a look at here is the regular art of Quick Ball. It's coming in at 400 yen, which you're looking at $3.60, or about £2.80. But when you bear in mind that, you know, a skateboard is 300 yen, Custom Catcher is 250 Great Catcher is 400 really here you're saying, all right, it's pretty much on a level with Great Catcher. That's pretty much what we're looking at here. Now, the other thing that surprises me a little bit with this list is that we're not seeing huge prices for the other Pokemon V. Now, I mean, if we take a look at, for instance, the Full Art Zamazenta, unfortunately don't have a price for the Gold Zamazenta, but we can look at the Full Art Zamazenta. It's coming in at 300 yen. 300 yen, you're looking basically $2.70 or £2.10 in the UK. That is less than we're paying for Quick Ball and is less than one ninth of the price of Full Art Zassian. If Full Art Zassian cost 2700 then Zamazenta would be one ninth of the price. As it is, we're looking at somewhere in the region of 10% of the price when you get all the rounding done. It is, quite frankly, a, um, a very cheap card. But a lot of the others are just not terribly expensive. Full Art More Pico V comes in at 700 yen. And More Pico V is a card that's seen some play and some love over in Japan already. But that's coming in at like $6.40 or £4.90. It's not an expensive card at all. I mean, Snorlax V Max has seen quite a lot of play and quite a lot of success already. We see Snorlax V Max coming into a whole bunch of decks, and yet Snorlax V Max comes in at 150 yen. That's $1.40 or like one pound. That's not an expensive card at all. At all. You compare it to Lapras V Max, which comes in at 250 yen, which is at least a bit more expensive than Snorlax. It's coming in at about $2.30 or about £1.75. And that's interesting because it means that the players over in Japan are really saying that Lapras is a more valuable card than Snorlax. 
But Lapras is a very popular Pokemon, so maybe it's to do with popularity, not just in terms of playability. That's one we'll have to try and figure out as we go. And what I do just want to shout out before we finish here, the regular Rowlet and Alolan Executor has jumped up to 700 yen, which is kind of $6.40 or about £4.90. Now, this is really interesting because, well, we're not expecting that. This is a card that's not seen a huge amount of play and love. But with Rillaboom decks running around doing quite well at the moment, maybe Grass is making a bit of a comeback. Maybe this is about to become a much more expensive card. Just a little tip for you on my way out. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There's a nice little indication of the rough value of cards over in Sword and Shield. I thought this was an interesting thing to look at. And certainly the one we did for Cosmic Eclipse went down quite well. So I thought it would be worth having a look at this too. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to know what you think about this. Do any of these surprise you? Do any of these look weird to you? Do any of these make you pause for thought? Or are they roughly in line with what you thought? And which ones of these do you think are going to be particularly good when everything kicks off? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, but please remember the rules. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, or you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash Plays, where we talk about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but do have awesome. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.